whole body MRI. Is it worth it to get one? Okay. I'm Dr. Paul Zalzal. I'm Dr. Brad Weening. Welcome to Talking With Docs. Brad, would you pay one to $2,000 to get a whole body MRI? It's a very interesting question, Paul, and I'll tell you at the end of the video. Hmm. Would, would you? What? Get a whole body MRI. Oh, um, that's a very interesting question, Brad. I'll tell you at the end. <laughs> I feel like you're making fun of me. I am. Okay. All right, so MRI. Yep. We've talked about MRI and how it works in other videos. Very interesting test, very safe, no yeah. radiation. Yeah. Gets really nice pictures of different structures. Yeah. And briefly how it works. Okay. Magnet. Is it puts your body into a big magnet and your body's made up mostly of water and fat. Okay. Sorry if you didn't know that. Yeah. Uh, which has a lot of hydrogen yeah. atoms in it. And hydrogen atoms have one proton. Right. These protons, like you and I, are very excitable. Yeah. So you put them in a magnetic you, field. You know who's excitable? Who? Max Scherzer. Ooh, yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Set him. <laughs> so you put these protons in a magnetic field. Yes. They, they line up, okay, in the magnetic field because they have their own little magnetic field of their own, right. dipoles of their own. They line up in this magnetic field. Then you hit them with a radio frequency. Right. That excites the yeah. proton. And they go out of that magnetic field. When the radio frequency stops, they fall back into the magnetic field and they give off some energy. That phone. gives us information. Right. And yes. then the time, the relaxation time to give off that energy is tissue dependent. So different right. tissues give it off at different times. So we detect these radio frequency energies that are coming off these relaxing protons and a computer puts it together and makes an image. So that's how you can distinguish different tissues. That's the whole idea of an imaging thing, distinguishing different tissues. Yeah, whether it's water, muscle, bone, whatever. Right. Bone doesn't give off a very good MRI signal because there's not a lot of hydrogen in there and that hydrogen is bound up, unlike you and I, because of our plant-based diets. That's right. Not me fully plant-based, but these things are bound up so they can't excite the proton as much so they don't give us clear an image right. of bone. That's why we use X-ray and CT. Then sometimes you can put gadolinium in. Yeah. Rare earth metal with a lot of free electrons floating around yep. changes the magnetic properties of the water molecules so you can help increase contrast of certain structures. But we digress. A little. Okay. So then, again, as you said, it's safe. No radiation, yep. right? Like a CT scan or an X-ray. So, and it's non-invasive because you're not putting a camera into someone to do yep. this. It's a little expensive. Access is not the best. It's not as readily available as like an X-ray machine or an ultrasound yep. probe. Depending on what country you live in, yep. for sure. Um, but now, is it worth just going and paying getting your whole body MRI if you're an otherwise healthy individual? Wait, That's well, a so, so let's start at the beginning. Why would someone possibly think of doing this? Okay. Why is this a thing? Because they want to know if they have something going on in their body that's not right that yeah. can be treated early. And if, the, if that's something that's going on, if the outcome is better if you treat it early, then it makes sense. Go get an MRI to get that thing identified before it's symptomatic. So truth okay. be told, we're mostly talking about cancers, right? Like when Cancer. people think about bad things, we're mm -hmm. really thinking, is there some little tumor growing yep. in me that's gonna slowly grow and then by the time it's big enough to notice, yep. we're like, oh, if we only would have known yes. earlier. These people are trying to get in front of that. Cancers. Primarily. That's the, that's, that's, yeah, that's where the money is in this okay. one. But there's like brain aneurysms that right. would be nice to detect before yep. they leak um, or other, you know, tissue problems, heart problems, or even atheros severe atherosclerosis right. and things like that. So when we say is it worth someone who is, ha is completely healthy going and having this test, that's called a screening test. Right. Okay, so is this a good screening test? Like a, like a mammogram or a colonoscopy or screening blood work. Exactly like that, yeah. And now most um, like governments, insurance plans, they don't, cover this. Okay, they haven't <laughs> no. adopted that as a proper screening tool, whereas you know, in our country there's a lot of screening tests that are paid for by the government because they're good screening tests. So let's look at what I was going to say is before that, like what's the definition of a good screening? What makes a screening test a worthy screening test? We've talked a little bit about this before. Wow. So you need to have a disease that's common enough. That's yeah. the first thing. Yes, yes. You need to have that kind of high index of suspicion yeah. and you need a test that reliably identifies the problem without doing one of two things, like A, missing it, or B, identifying something else that looks like the problem and yes. leaving with what to do now. Yeah, and I hate to say it, but that screening test has to be cost effective. Agreed. Right, because you don't want to, you know, any healthcare system or insurance plan looks at the cost of something. Yes. It's, it's an unfortunate truth, but you know yeah. they, they put a, 
price tag on our health. For sure. So you want a screen test that's relatively inexpensive yeah. uh, so that you can cap. And the way they would look at it as a cost effectiveness is, is by investing in the screening test, are we saving money later by not having to treat people with major surgeries and other major treatments? What would be cool if someone did a research paper mm -hmm. on whether or not MRIs in asymptomatic people was useful in like what they found? Great. If only we had one. Right away. So the most recent one I could find, whole body MRI for opportunistic cancer detection in asymptomatic individuals, a systematic review and meta-analysis. This is in the European Radiology Journal. Yeah. It came out online in August 2025. You should read it with an accent. I, well, I don't know which part of Europe. Yeah. But the problem is it's not a freebie. Sorry, people. I had to buy this article. Oh, right? I see. Oh, so we, not can, a, we can't provide access. No. We provide the title, essentially. Yeah. Uh, and it's uh, not in print yet. It's just an, right. online, an online, online publication precedes the print publication. Okay. So it's hot off the press. So that's good. So they looked at a bunch of things. And they looked at about you know, hundreds and hundreds of papers and narrowed it down to 10 studies okay. uh, that met their criteria. To look to include in their meta-analysis and that yielded over 9,000 study participants okay. okay so they looked at a pretty decent Not number bad. and now first and foremost getting one of these whole body MRIs does not appear to increase your mortality like increase your lifespan or so it doesn't save your life it won't save doesn't your increase life. your life there's no evidence of that yet okay, okay. on a not. population basis Obviously, yeah. if you happen to be one of the people that found yes. something, then anecdotally, and someone's like, well, I had a whole body MRI, yeah. and I found a cancer and eye treatment. We can't talk with ends of ones, and yeah. your anecdote is not evidence, unfortunately. So taking the group That's right. didn't no. increase your life. No. Okay. So, so far, and there's no literature, no proof that getting a whole body MRI is going to save your life. Okay. Fine. What, what are the numbers? Let's look at some of the, the findings that are, are made. Okay. If you look at clinically significant findings, so that's like something that required medical evaluation, like a tumor okay. or an aneurysm or a cyst or something, yeah. it's about 10 to 15 percent. Okay. Which is pretty good. Yeah. The problem is the number of incidental findings. We call them incidental omas. Yes. These are findings that wouldn't harm you, wouldn't do anything to you, and if you didn't know they're there, your life would be better. Because you right, because you have no symptoms. You wouldn't even yeah. know about it. Yeah. But now that you know that it's there now, now you have to, what am I going to do about it? Yeah. Okay. 70 to 85% of the time they pick something like that. So up. almost all of the people. Almost everyone. Which makes some, sense. Yeah. Like we all have little, little yeah. errors in our, in our yeah. biology yeah. that are not significant. Yes. But they might show up on a test yeah. and now you're like, okay. And what, what's the problem with those? The problem with those is that it generates a lot of anxiety and stress. If you yes. see, oh, I've got something abnormal. Yeah. A, it makes you anxious. And B, it takes you down a rabbit hole of a bunch of investigations that you may not need if you didn't know that thing that isn't important was there. And I've read right. studies that show up to like 90 or 95% of the time these whole body MRIs pick up some kind of abnormality. Right, and, and, and kind of twofold. So one, if, if, you have, if you don't have insurance, then you're stuck paying for these tests. Yeah. Or I'm stressing about that. Or if you're in a socialized healthcare system, then that system is bearing the brunt or the burden yeah. of that and those investigations. Yes. Okay. Exactly. So um, that's probably you have, if you're going to do one of these, you have to keep that in mind. Just sure. be prepared. So this is going to show something abnormal. Right. right? Um, and then if you look at true cancer or true, you know, tumors, how many of those did it pick up? That's the important number. Okay. It's, it's pretty low. It's about 0.3 to 1.8 percent of the time. Everyone says that's low in the literature, but it seems a bit higher than low to me, right? Because yeah, it's so three in a thousand to. Uh, you know, yeah. two and a hundred. Yeah, if you okay. take somewhere in the middle of that, it basically it would be like about maybe every 65 people who did this, one would have right. something that is, you know, a true okay. cancer. Uh, the false positive rate, however, is about 10 to 20 percent of the time. So they'll say, yeah, you have a cancer, and they'll be wrong 10 to 20 percent of the time. Right. And that's not, you know, that's a subset of those incidents. And they confirm almost. that with some type of invasive testing, probably like a biopsy or an well, excision. Well, that's the thing. Now, you're, now, you're, now you may have something that can do harm, right? right. So like a biopsy is not benign treatment, right? But on yeah. a biopsy, there's complications that can happen or yep. things like that. And then people who've had a whole body MRI, the percent that need further imaging is about 5 to 7%. Okay. So who's going to pay for that? Are you, is that place where you went and got the whole body MRI and say, okay, now you need this image? I suspect not. Or is our healthcare system going to have to pay for that? So these I'm going to have to pay now for your extra imaging. Right. Way to go. Yeah, you got to pay. Thanks. <laughs> and you got to listen to me call you every day because of the incidental loma. And How's I'm your stressed. extra imaging? I haven't had time to get it yet. Brad, it's me again. I'm really nervous. <laughs> they found something wrong on my MRI. Yeah. So those are kind of the numbers to keep in mind.
if you're thinking of having one of these whole body MRIs. Right. So, and we, and we are all about preventative care. If you've watched our channel before, we're all about prevention. Yeah. So, you know, healthy diet, um, exercising regularly, prioritizing your sleep, reducing your stress, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. And doing the proven screening test. Oh, we're yeah. all about the proven screening test. Yeah. We're not saying screening doesn't work. Yeah. But and it's up to you to find out what screening tests are available to yes. you, right? These, these things can be as simple as a blood test looking at your PSA, looking at your thyroid, looking at your hemoglobin. Your sugars, your, your cholesterol. Sugar. These are all screening tests, right? And then for women, there's uh, breast screening tests that yeah. they do, right? Mammograms, yep. ultrasounds, yep. biopsies. So there are a lot of screening tests available to you, and those are proven to save lives, right. okay? So definitely take advantage of those. Now I ask you. Well, no, before we get there, oh. is there any population in the world yeah. that you'd say, you know what? For most people, this doesn't make sense, but for you, uh, a whole body MRI does make sense. That's a good question. Okay, for sure. Let's say you've had a previous history of cancer and you're trying to detect metastases. Yes. There are different imaging techniques to do that. Whole body MRI is reasonable in that sense. Yep. Quick question. Would you say that that would be part of potentially the normal protocol? So your doctor might order that anyway, rather than yeah. you having to go get that on your own. That I would imagine. Yeah. Okay. So whole body MRI works for that. Yeah. What about what about prevention? Anyone that you say, you know what, we're worried yeah. about this more than the average person. Yeah. So if you have a genetic predisposition to cancers, or you've had some genetic testing and you've been identified as someone who's a high risk of certain cancers, then the whole body MRI might be worth it for you. Right. The, there's a pediatric population that are predisposed to certain cancers because MRI is so safe. Right. It's so handy to use in a pediatric population. That is at risk. Um, What's there anything else? No, I think that's good. And I think the other thing to clarify, we talked a little bit about the technique of an MRI. This is not the same MRI that you're getting in your knee. Oh, that's so I, true. I, yeah. I think it's important to talk about, it's, it's, not, it's not kind of the same quality, essentially. Yeah, the resolution it can be, the, the spatial resolution can be a bit lower when you're doing a whole body MRI in, in the efficiency of time, because this thing takes 30 minutes to 90 minutes, you know, right. depending on the resolution you So usually, often, as far as I know, they won't be using as high a resolution as a focal MRI that's looking at a specific And that relates thing. to the coil. Like if you're doing a knee MRI, often they have a coil yeah. that's very, very close to your knee. So it can essentially, it's like a flashlight. So you can really yeah. focus the flashlight on a small area rather than going really, really yes. wide and having less light. Yes. And, and, and most of the time, these screening MRIs do not use gadolinium. Right. Some do, but most of the time they don't. Gadolinium is really good at picking up blood flow, which is really good at identifying if there's a tumor there. Yeah. So would you get one? So, so the answer for me is, is no. no. You know what I mean? I'm all about doing the vast majority of my appropriate screening testing. Yeah. Um, but A, for the money, I think even if you said, oh, I can afford it, I, I don't think I would want to worry about it. Yeah. I'm happy to wait for some symptoms to show up, be proactive for that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. no, I, I kind of don't want to know. Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. <laughs> what about you? No. I don't think <laughs> I would go. I mean, initially when I saw the commercials, like, I'm like, oh, oh I got to get one of those. Yeah. But then when we did a bit of a deeper dive, yeah. I realized that the if I just do the screening tests that are available to me, which are also which are aimed at the most common cancers, that's probably going to be good enough uh, to capture something. So I think as we would really labor it. So say you, you find like a cyst in the liver seems to be one of like the common things. So now yeah. obviously you have a big cyst in your yeah. liver. You know, is someone going to put a needle in there? Yeah. Is someone going to open you up and, re and remove it? This has a lot of morbidity mm -hmm. and potentially even mortality associated yes. with it. And if you don't do those other tests, then you're just sitting there wondering, is it bigger? Now should I get another one? Yeah. You know, do I need another one next week? Do yeah. I need another one next month? Yeah. Just saying, oh, yeah. I think I just felt my liver cyst, you know, yeah. you'd be obsessed. Now, however, if you are the type of person that's very anxious and very concerned because you've had a family history or someone near you has died, totally get that, and you feel com and that makes you feel better getting this done. Just be aware that there's a lot of incidental findings. Be aware that there's a lot of false positives, and be aware that this may trigger a bunch of tests. But if that's what you want to do, we're not going to make you. fun of you. No, you would make fun of me. I think I would. Yeah, if you got one, but with the general population, I right. would. Okay, so, so now you know you know, know what a whole body MRI is, the potential role for it, and you can make a decision for yourself, just like all our videos. We're trying to provide you with information to make an informed decision. Yeah. And if you like this video, please like it, subscribe to our channel, share it with someone that you know is maybe considering this, or maybe someone that's talking about saying, hey, everyone should be getting these. Yeah, and remember, you are in charge of your own health, and you're in charge of whether or not you want to get your body imaged. Absolutely, we'll see you next time.